Thank you for visiting Litson.com and for this opportunity to give you a visual comparison of the Forest River Georgetown against the Winnebago Vista and Itasca Sunstar. One of the first things that you'll notice here on the exterior of the coach is that the decals and paint do not continue onto the water heater and furnace covers, which is ultimately just a very unattractive look for the exterior. Within this storage compartment here, you'll notice the completely exposed electrical outlet, which could certainly become a safety issue. As we move to the rear here, we're going to step inside of another compartment where you'll notice that all of the porthole covers are of a twist off style, which can be very clumsy to handle and could easily be lost. In addition to that, the fresh water capacity leaves much to be desired in that every floor plan only offers 50 gallons of fresh water versus 60 to 84 gallons available in Winnebago floor plans. The exterior compartments are all made of a grooved plastic, which can also can be very e difficult to keep clean. As we take a look at the roof of the Georgetown, there's a few key things to point out. First off, you've got a great shot of the crank up antenna that you can see here, which I will touch on again when we go through the interior of the coach. This roof material is also a textured fiberglass, which, which can be more difficult to maintain. The shortest floor plan available in the Georgetown is 28 foot 10 inches versus in the Winnebago Vista, which is the shortest one available is 26 foot 11 inches. Also within the Georgetown, there is only one or two slides available in all of their floor plans, unlike Winnebago that offers a floor plan with three. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look inside of the Georgetown. First, here you'll notice that they still use the crank up antenna versus the stationary king jack that Winnebago uses that has the signal sensor right on it. Also that material that you saw on the ceiling is a wallboard type of material versus the padded vinyl that Winnebago uses in both the Vista as well as the Sunstar. Here you can see the leveling jack pad, which is for the LCI electronic leveling jacks, whereas Winnebago uses a power gear leveling jack, which is electronic over hydraulic operation. You can see that they use a Jensen car radio system versus the radio that Winnebago uses that has specifically been designed for RVs. As you can see here, there is not an in-dash passenger workstation available in the Georgetown. We're going to take a look here at the sofa. Uh, this is a hide -a bed sofa, uh, which ultimately means that you do not get the storage below as with a jackknife sofa. And with the exception of only one floor plan, there's also no overhead storage above their sofas. As you can see here, as, as Jason's demonstrating, they use a day-night pleated shade. Uh, Winnebago instead uses MCD roller shades, which are much easier to use, uh, easier to keep clean. Here you can see that the dinette width is, is extremely skinny, uh, limiting both how many people you can sit at the dinette as well as your sleeping capacity of the coach. Here you'll notice what I had touched on earlier in which their dinette and sofa sit directly next to each other in all of their floor plans, which ultimately does not make the space very conversational setting for when you do have other guests along with you. Now we're going to take a step back into the bedroom area. The primary things that we noticed here is that there is not very much walk around space around the bed and they do not use a rod in the wardrobe closet, which is really going to limit the amount of storage that you have for hanging items. We're going to pan over and take a look at their control panel, which is ultimately very small and dark. Winnebago really prides itself on the one place panel that they use, which is very well lit and easy to navigate. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call.